Hello and welcome to the Sofa School. Yeah, we are in Denmark uh, and just here by the Corona quarantine, um, accidentally, the school's closed down and mm -hmm. Josefina and I, we thought, what can we do about this? And we turned to remote teaching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've been a teacher for a long time ago, but uh, I turned to Josefina because she's been a teacher just recently. Mm -hmm. And then we started up this emergency school. Mm -hmm. And for the last four weeks, we've been teaching mm -hmm. thousands of Danish students uh, in, at primary level. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we now we want to show you what we did for the last four weeks and we want you to maybe learn from us and maybe can use some of our tips and tricks. So what we're doing with you guys mm -hmm. uh, out there is basically the same as we're doing with the, mm -hmm. our students mm -hmm. on a daily basis during the mm -hmm. corona quarantine. Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, just to mention, mm -hmm. there is a chat on YouTube mm -hmm. and Feel free to use it. Um, we saw that many of you already started it up. The Mentimeter folks are there to help you out. And also one of our fellow teachers from the SOFA school, Minsk, will be there to answer questions. But to participate in the, our polls and our mm -hmm. quizzes, please use menti.com and this code 70-58-55. menti.com and use this code. So we know that you people are from all over the world. We are in Copenhagen, in Denmark, and uh, we really want to meet you guys. And a way for us to meet you is that you answer where you're sitting right now. And we have four percentage of you guys staying at other planets. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! We have aliens attending. Welcome especially to you. <laughs> well, maybe they are human beings, uh, Josephine. <laughs> That's the thing about remote <laughs> teaching, isn't it? That you're not, as a teacher, able to, to actually look your students uh, into yeah. the eyes. Well, sometimes you are in, yeah. in smaller groups uh, with, uh, with Teams or Zoom or whatever you use. But in this situation, we are not able to, to look you guys in the eyes. Mm. So this is our only chance to know that you are here. Yes. You showed up for this lesson. Thank you. Mm. And go to menti.com, use this code to participate in the polls. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we see an over-representation from Europe. Maybe it's got something to do with the time zone. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We don't know that. We wouldn't be able to, to tell, but we could investigate this. This could actually be a topic for one of our lessons. Mm -hmm. How come that's, that's, that this poll turned out like this? Mm -hmm. But yes. we won't. We'll proceed. So. In this lesson, you can be sitting wherever you want to, and you can be drinking whatever you want to. So this is not bring your own device, but this is bring your own drink. Oh, yeah. And uh, we did bring a uh, drink, too. Yes. So, uh, so are you sitting cozy at home? Do you have a drink? Do you even have a snack? Yes. Something stronger. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes, yes. And uh, where are you sitting? Are you in your couch, in your sofa? We named the school the sofa school, the couch school, because we know a lot of kids are sitting at home in their couch, doing their study, doing their lessons. That was actually the whole point about this school, that if there was one good thing to say about the, the quarantine, it was that you could actually be taught while sitting in a couch or in a sofa. Mm. So the sofa school was mm. invented. Mm. And uh, we have people at their desk and people in their couch, of course. Of course, but not mm. many on the go. Mm. Well, a webinar is difficult on the go, but you could be on a tram mm. or mm. in a train, couldn't you? Mm. So we'll get back to why we're doing this, why we're asking you all these questions. Um, we'll get back to that mm. in a minute. Mm. So now we want to know how you are. How are you feeling? Well, right now I'm actually feeling good because I'm doing something in this yeah. um, unhappy uh, situation, this unhappy state of the world. I'm actually able to do something. Uh, the Mentimeter guys set up this webinar and people um, are, are participating, yes, obviously. So yes, I'm actually yes. doing something so that makes me feel good. Yes. And we have students right now, because we you <laughs> are our students. We have students that are very excited. That's great. Yes, and we are very excited that you are here. 
And, and we're using this because, of course, uh, your feelings can be mixed, mm -hmm. especially when you're a kid. Mm -hmm. I think you, you, your feelings are mixed. So, so we you take this, uh, this polling, which is 100 po points to give you, and then make a priority of how you're feeling so mm -hmm. that everybody is actually included in, in this poll. Mm -hmm. If we were mm -hmm. only to pick one choice here, mm -hmm. it, it might be an exclusive um, poll, and that's mm -hmm. not what we want to do. So, they are excited and optimistic, our Good. students. Okay, let's not yes. disappoint them. <laughs> so, if we are not going to disappoint you, then we have to know what you expect. Mm -hmm. So, describe your expectations to this webinar and we'll see what come up. Yeah, and this is actually something we don't do with our students. Mm. Because, and not to give you any good ideas, uh, but when you teach 3,000, the students, kids, they might not um, well uh, bring the the best closest into the to the work class. So you're cloud. a bit afraid so of asking I, them. I'm afraid of asking uh, with a total, even with the profanity filter on. Yeah. Uh, there is a risk uh, that yeah. that something appears on the screen which we don't want. But um, we took this risk with you guys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> hoping. So you want to learn something and you are excited and you want to be inspired inspired and, inspired and you want to have fun and maybe we could give them hope Ooh, i hope so yes mm. so i think that we will inspire you and that we will give you some ideas through this hour we will give you examples from the sofa school and we will end up with q and a's too yes, yes. We will. So this is the content for this lesson. We will talk about community building. We will talk about and show you, of course, how we make room or space for reflection and uh, how we interact and use objects, how we do variation and an inclusive learning environment, and how we um, decide which answers. Yeah, organize, yeah. how we organize yeah. uh, different answers, yeah. uh, types of answers, types of slides yeah. to, to, uh, to influence on our mm -hmm. outcome mm -hmm. or the, actually what the, the students they yes. learn. And then we will end up with about 20 minutes of Q&A. Let's see. Yes. Let's see, because we yes. haven't done this webinar before. Mm -hmm. And as you hear, we are usually teaching in Danish and now we... <laughs> And that's one thing about <laughs> teaching remotely. You need to, to be brave and yeah, to, to yeah, try something yeah, yeah. new. And this is new you for us. You don't think that we're native English speakers? I, I think they recognized already. Okay. So, what is your best learning position? You're sitting at home right now, we guess, or maybe or at, at work. at the desk at work. At we the saw desk. That. But, and, and, and you're listening to us. But how do you learn? What, what does it take for you to learn when you're at a workshop, at a course, or when you're the student? We really want to know when you're the student. Hmm. Yeah. Where would you place yourself? I am really into like an active workshop. The worst for me is two hours of lecturing uh -huh. where I have to sit and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I need to to speak with others and I need to like move and write and draw and be very active when I have to learn something. But uh, I have a colleague who just loves sitting for two hours just listening. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, and again, this we use the, the rating, um, mm -hmm. the rating poll for this type of question because it's not just maybe one answer. Well, you're quite clear that you would like to be in conversation. <laughs> yes. But there could actually be other positions. Yeah. Um, but depending also on what active. You... So I, okay. I would choose okay. like in conversation and being active. That's right. important for me. Mm. Mm. But importantly is to know that students are different. And so you need to, yeah. to create your remote teaching situation. So it actually sort of uh, gives everybody a chance to, yeah. to gain from it. Yeah. And a lot of our students right now, a lot of the teachers sitting out there uh, is taking notes. It seems so. Yeah. Mm. And if some of you uh, just joined this uh, webinar, mm. um, please be aware that to participate in these polls, you should go to mendy.com and use mm. the code you see on the screen. Mm. 
uh, the, the chat on YouTube is also open, but uh, we won't be able to, to do anything there. We have a fellow teacher from the SOFA school, and the guys from uh, Mentimeter are there to help you out. So when we ask you about how you learn stuff, it's because we want you to think about your uh, position as a student. Because when you're teaching, you have students that learn in, in a lot of different ways. I guess so. Yes. And we also want you to do another thing. During this webinar, we want to like take a trip up in the air and look down on how we do stuff here. So when you feel something or experience something in this webinar, think about how you can use it in your own teaching. Yeah, because yeah. this is designed, our, the SOFA school is designed for teaching in, in mm. primary um, education mm. situations, but mm. uh, I think many of the principles can be used, at least we use them also when yeah. we teach adults yeah. um, and on all levels. But have this meta uh, layer yeah. with you all the way. Yeah, the great vision. Mm, yes. The helicopter vision. Exactly. So the first way to get in this helicopter vision is to Think back on the first five minutes of this webinar. How did you feel? Mm. I was very excited. <laughs> <laughs> but how did you feel in the first five minutes? What did we make you feel? Okay. And now you can even answer. <laughs> how did you feel? And uh, we chose to uh, make the possibilities with emojis. Mm -hmm. Using visuals. Yes. Um, which is, I'm, I mean, a gift. To, to someone, mm -hmm. someone would hate it because I, this is not precise. But mm -hmm. I think next generation, mm -hmm. uh, to them, it, this is uh, the most uh, easy way to, yeah. to describe. Yeah. Uh, these are emojis we use with the, with the kids when we yeah. teach in SOFA school. But there are pl plentiful uh, yeah. of, of, of emojis out there. All other visuals that you can use in these multiple choice uh, yeah. and other polling types. And we have like very uh, heavy students, <laughs> hugging heavy still, nerdy, still, <laughs> still <laughs> heavy hugging nerdy students, <laughs> and of course we have some of you being tired. Mm. We don't know what time so you, zone you are in. No. Nope. Here in Denmark, it's in the afternoon, so you would be a bit tired. Maybe after they are long tired days. after hearing five minutes of <laughs> our lesson here. Maybe you're already done after five minutes. The great thing about visuals and emojis is that when we don't use words to describe your, your feeling, you can, you can like choose the emoji that suits you the best. Mm. Yes. So, perfect. Okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. And the nerdy ones. Yes, yes, yes. I feel quite nerdy about this Mentimeter thing as well, yeah. uh, but once I reveal it to yeah. other people, they, they don't see it as nerdy, this Mentimeter, because, uh, wow. Uh, this is a new tool for me, uh, a new way of thinking when you teach. And uh, when we ask you about your first feeling, it's because that a lot of you knows that you often forget what the teacher said. But you will never forget how you felt. So you will never forget if it was inspiring or if it was fun or if it was boring. Mm. Right. And that's, uh, I mean, to create feelings uh, among your students, is, uh, that's a difficult thing when you, you're not in the same room. Hmm. So that's what this is about, actually. Yes, yes. So our first trick. Yes. If we should call it a trick. It, it's not a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you have to begin with building the community. You have to start the lesson with making the um, relationship with, yeah. the, with the students. So you have to show who you are. You have to show that you are a positive and engaged. Well, yeah. that's up to you, isn't it? Up to, or up to you, but at least building up that community feeling. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what, of course, we try to do in yeah. these first yeah. 10 minutes of the, yeah. of the webinar. So shouldn't we uh, show them? Yeah. how it looks in the sofa school when we try to build the community. Yes, so this is a video stream from, yes. uh, from YouTube. Yes. Just that, like this live uh, streaming. Uh, and here we see um, it's in Danish. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it, you wouldn't be able to, to know what it's about. But we are asking, how are you? And as you see, we have uh, Josefine here actually uh, in, a, in, a, <laughs> in a rope. Uh, it's in the morning, and she didn't. Mm. And, and later on in the in the not in the show, but later on the, in the lesson, mm. 
the, the students they are to choose from uh, from a various mm -hmm. of, uh, of suits what should Josephine wear mm -hmm. so that's a point of uh, giving a little bit of yourself as mm -hmm. a teacher here and and giving over some mm -hmm. decision power mm -hmm. or decision making to to the yeah. students yeah and we start every morning by asking the students uh, how they're feeling mm. and in what which grade they're in and where they're sitting so so they should like feel welcome mm. welcome to school we're happy you're here it's very important so yes? they know who whom they are with yeah okay yeah that's the first mm. and um, then we want to know from you guys what characterize a good online community mm, because this is what webinars are able to also it's yeah. to share yeah. knowledge and to share experience yeah. uh, and I mean we have one take on teaching remotely but I'm quite sure that yeah. that yeah, you yeah, have yeah. some takes on okay. it too so wow. collaboration respect energy people are engaged communication trust yes so how do you create trust? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Sometimes you uh, remote teach students you know. They are in your normal classroom, regular classroom, and sometimes you don't know them. Mm. Mm. Connected emotionally. Mm. Yeah, that's just what you do in a class. Um, I mean, you start by seeing I how's everybody. I discover many similarities with the regular classroom here. And maybe tutto te buono aveva voglia di collaborare. Tutti devono. <laughs> ah, io vedo in Italia. In Italia. That would be Italian. Yeah, they need great to collaborate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. Appreciation, stress-free atmosphere. Mm. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Keep it coming. <laughs> and you can of course uh, read each other responses and Yes, and mm -hmm. afterwards we can ask the Minty folks to, to take this out, the results out, and share them in, in the event. Mm -hmm. we'll, I think we'll do that, won't we? Mm -hmm. We'll ask the Minty folks to do that. Uh, we can do it ourselves, but let the Minty folks share it. Definitely. Thanks. Thanks Definitely. for collaborating. Yes, and thanks for bringing all these amazing uh, words and thoughts up. I, I really agree with you guys. Really good. Yeah. Okay. Belonging. <laughs> oh, I want to be a but part of your not community. To stress you, not to stress you, but we need to move <laughs> forward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, so in your lessons, how important are these aspects? So we have community feeling and atmosphere. Mm -hmm. We talked about that. The structure and the lesson plan. Mm -hmm. The interaction with your students, the level of your knowledge, and on given subjects, the students' motivation and mm -hmm. engagement. And of course, there are many more perspectives mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. teaching. But these are five, uh, well, we found these as five key positions or key, mm -hmm. key perspectives on teaching. Yeah. So and if they're all equal, we see the spider web becoming very like it, it seems equal that in each it seems, corner. It seems they're quite equal, yeah. equally okay. distributed yeah. By, yeah. by our yeah. students, yes. participants. Yeah. I'm not quite sure how to <laughs> address you guys out there, sorry, but. <laughs> We know you are both teachers and students. Yeah, yeah. and presenters. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just curious. Mm. But it seems that they're quite equal. Structure and less lesson plan is uh, the scoring the least here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And interaction is very high. And and that must make some people at Mentimeter happy because the whole thought about using all these polls is that mm. you are you are answering and that you are active as a student. Of course. Yes. It, this, uh, just to mention, this um, the spider chart, we used it in the, with the primary school kids mm -hmm. and they had quite difficulties in understanding what, what mm -hmm. kind of a chart is this. Yeah. So we yeah. Needed, uh, needed a lot of explanation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what we just did here? Was to try at mm -hmm. least. To get you to think. So a very important thing for our lessons in the SOFA school is that we get the students to think. To reflect, actually. Yes. So we ask them questions that we don't know th their answers to, like we did just here. We don't know what's important for you guys. And the most important thing is not that you answer the same as we would like to hear, but mm. that you th start to think and reflect about what is an online community. Yes. 
And in the sofa school, we could get the kids to think about math or about uh, newspapers, writing, or... You touch upon a lot of different subjects. Yes, yes, yes. So let's see how we... Do we have a video <laughs> clip yeah, of the sofa school where yeah. we in, need in to the get the students yeah. to reflect? In yes. this stream sequence from uh, one of our um, lessons in the sofa school, mm -hmm. We had uh, the, the content, uh, no, the creative director of Vice in Denmark, which is an advertising um, bureau, coming in, and uh, instead of art asking, instead of asking him, what do you do in your job position, we asked the, the students, what do you think Emil was his name, do in his job position? So the, the the students were to reflect before he gave them the answer on. What does a creative director um, do? And as you see, there were some other things on the table which also started a reflection mm. that mm. we released um, uh, later on in, mm. in the lesson. Mm. So we find it more important to get the students to think than to just tell them what a creative director do. And that's right. what we use the poll yeah. for. Yeah. Not to, to, to control that they actually know it, but to, to start up um, mm -hmm. their thinking process. Yes, I'm getting really thirsty <laughs> yes. right now so of all I. this talking. So, so I really need think that we should have a toast okay. with the participants and and here in the studio. But we need to like have a sign. Yes. How do how do we say let's have a toast? Okay. And uh, we have different objects here. What do we have? <laughs> we have uh, the folding ruler. Yeah. Which we use to symbolize that uh, we keep not even not only symbolize but to make sure that we keep uh, a proper distance yes. in these corona yes. uh, quarantine yes. times. So we have the can, bell to, 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 to start and mm -hmm. end the lessons. Mm -hmm. um, it's a ritual, mm -hmm. and also as a ritual, but also because we, we shoot, we, uh, we spirit our hands, we wash our hands with spirits, but it seems that it's the bell. Okay, then you need to ring the bell now to have a toast okay. with the guy. So cheers, yeah. and thank you for attending. Yeah, Yes. cheers. Ah, great. Thank you. Amazing. So um, now we had a toast, mm -hmm. but uh, and now we're ready and prepared. But we did think about our like clothes and what we to did. wear. And uh, maybe we should let the participant choose what tie, because you're missing your tie. I'm missing my tie, yeah. Yes. And you're not letting them choose what tie knot I should use, because I only know one. <laughs> Um, and this is a very basic one, it's a single okay. one. No Windsor knots or anything <laughs> uh, fancy here. But you get to choose the color now. <sighs> All right. Okay, what do we have? The jack and the test pattern. Oh, so what is the test pattern? Um, the test pattern was created, it was designed for testing picture tubes, mm. actually by a Danish engineer. Mm. And then it was um, put in the Philips um, electronics picture mm. tubes. Mm and it became iconic to, to television okay. all over the world. And it's, well, I can't uh, wear <laughs> two ties. No, you have to wear the It's the your jack. decision. It's your decision when we close this, Paul. Uh, oh, it's very close. It's very close. But you know, animal print is very high in fashion. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, it will be the animal print. <laughs> it's a jack. It's a jack. Okay, yes. thanks. Okay. Thanks so, so now you're you're well dressed for for, this for the rest lesson. of the webinar. <laughs> yes. So, when you're remote teaching and you got your drink ready and your clothes on, what device do you use? And we have oh, yeah. different devices. Technical stuff. Yeah, because you could use your tablet. Oh, you could use your laptop. Should we just leave it like that? Yeah, maybe. Ah. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. Yes, we have the laptop and the phone. So what do you think is suited for you? And right now, there's absolutely no doubt. It's the laptop. The laptop is the great winner. The we don't have the, um, the, the big old computer here. Oh. <laughs> maybe you're not at a laptop. Just, yeah. Um, but why, why, why do we need to put them on, bring them onto the table? Why we need to see them? Yeah, we could just as well uh, mention laptop tablet. Because I think that it makes it more uh, easy to understand. So it's not only words, you know. It's get 
when you are doing a webinar and you're not interacting with the students, you, you talk a lot. Mm. We talk a lot. Yeah. So when you bring in stuff, you can see what we're talking about. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, and that's very important. Okay. And uh, when you're doing your webinar or your remote teaching, we have uh, three important stuff you can, you can think about getting ready. Mm. The light, the students need to see you. So position yourself uh, where the light is good, maybe at a, a window or just turn on extra light in your living room. We cheated a bit. We did. Yeah, because we have a lot of lights in here. And some professionals to put it up. Yes, but we did it at home too, just with our Oh yeah, of own. course. Yeah. yeah. Then you have to think about the sound, and one trick to get better sound is to put on your headset. Very basic thing. Yes, because the microphone in the computer is difficult to like catch the mm. sound, and it catches all the sound in the room, and your headset will be more sharp. Mm, but with a great effect. Yes. Small thing, great effect. And then the last thing is the picture. So you have to think about how you position your laptop. You can move it a bit up so you don't get all the ceiling behind mm. you. Hmm? And if you use one of these, consider whether it's in this position or this, that position. Yes, yes. And find out what's best. And you, you ask me, why <laughs> did you bring all this stuff here? Oh, yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. The students love when they can interact with you, when they can decide the tie, mm -hmm. when they can see the objects and they can decide what you're doing. Mm. Every day we run a news show mm -hmm. where we talk about, the, of course, the corona crisis, but also mm -hmm. basic principles in news media. Mm -hmm. and, and we take out all the newspapers and we ask them, if, if you were going in quarantine alone, which paper would you pick today? And then we go through the papers and it's important to uh, uh, to have the papers actually mm. as physical objects here. One day they were to, uh, to choose what cereal not to have, but uh, they were to guess what's uh, in this cereal. Mm -hmm. What does it cost? Uh, why does, why, why has, is it wrapped in purple? And mm -hmm. what does this brand stand mm -hmm. for? Mm -hmm. And that we have the cereals um, and we pour them up in, in little uh, cups. And in the video clip that you're watching right now, in fact, the student helped us bake a cake. That's right. So we had math and we had to calculate, calculate what to use. And the students were sitting at home and deciding with their phones what to put in the cake. Mm. And they even ended up deciding who of us should eat the cake. Yes. And luckily for, for me, it was uh, Josefine <laughs> because they, they didn't <laughs> put enough sugar in it and too much flour, I think. Yes. At least it <laughs> wasn't the best cake ever. And, and we also have these uh, padlocks here because we, uh, we put you in a cage. I was we locked, locked up, you up once. Yes. <laughs> and to get uh, a slack out of the cage, the students has to solve math problems. So it's like an escape room. So they collaborated mm. to get me out of that escape room. Yeah. So one way to get the students engaged is that you do interactive questions where they, their answers uh, uh, interfere with, with what's happening in the studio mm. or it, it's in front of your screen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you basically never do that. Give the, the students the, the power to actually tell what? the teacher <laughs> what to do. It's, uh, I mean, it's the opposite world, isn't it? Usually it's yeah. the teacher who tells the students what to do. And by giving them just a little, just, just a little thing, uh, what suit should I wear, uh, what, yeah. how should I bake the cake, uh, you give them an enormous... Um, enormous uh, uh, I think it's a, an eye-opener to them that, yeah. oh, wow, hey, they're yeah. actually open to, uh, to conversation. Yeah. Or not only to conversation, but also mm. to action. And there's one great bonus with this, is that I feel more happy about remote teaching when, when we bring out stuff. And often you sit at home uh, doing remote teaching, and maybe you have stuff at home that you can use. Mm. Yes. So how do they feel about remote teaching? There are uh, very different opinions. Yes, yes. Some feel tiresome and mm. say it's not effective. Mm. Um, mm. Some say it's awkward for students mm. and for the teachers. Mm. Um, it can be embarrassing mm. and not very comfortable. And I guess uh, those... Challenging. Yeah. Um, and, I, and that's what we're trying to address to make this... Uh, because it is an, um, a strange and awkward situation, but how yes. can we make it uh, a more normal situation with, mm -hmm. uh, with a better atmosphere around it. Yeah. Because after all, teaching has been going on for thousands of years, so there's a culture around teaching. 
that you should be in the same room, you should be like, you should have a relation, a physical relation, and you cut off that physical relation. And then you have to remember one thing, that if you're remote teaching your regular classroom, your regular students, they know you. So if you know the students, you, you can really get started by just being you, because the students are maybe missing you. Mm. So That's what we've heard from yeah. teachers in Denmark, at least, um, that, that when they found out how to appear on the screens mm -hmm. um, in, in various um, video uh, meeting systems, something else happened. Uh, the, 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 it became more effective, um, the, the teaching yeah. done in the, this emergency mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. So, the role you play in the remote teaching is very, very important, especially mm. when the kids know you. And maybe you have some personal skills that are very um, effective to bring in, you know? So what are Let's your see. personal skills? What can you use in your remote teaching? And we have some hard-working students here, oh, yeah. <laughs> some hard-working teachers. But we're actually yes. not asking mm -hmm. what can you use, what skills can you use. No. We're simply asking what do you recognize. Yes. And then we want to tell you that you can use that skill, right? Yeah, I think so. That's yeah. a point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have funny, brave. So what's the difference between being confident and brave? Do you think there's a difference between the two? Are uh, you asking uh, our... Or, or can you answer? Uh, because well, we can't hear their <laughs> answers. Well, <laughs> no. Um, well, being brave means like uh, you need to do this without knowing where you actually end. Mm. And if you're confident, it's typical because you know where this ends. Mm. Um, mm. I think so. That's yeah. a, there is a difference. Yeah. I feel that too. Like if I don't know where we're going or how to do remote teaching, then if I'm brave, I can get started, <laughs> even though I'm not confident in how to do it. Mm. That's great. great. Okay. Yes. So, what does it take yes, because to be a teacher remotely? And again, it's our choice, these five yeah. um, different, should we say, well, not skills, but yeah. uh, these... Uh, Elements. Elements. Yeah, yeah. And, and is it right that they have 100 points uh, right 100 now? 100 points, yes. So you have 100 points that you can share on these elements. So what does it take? What's the most important thing? Or what, maybe, what you should spend your energy on? Or, mm. you know, we have the point being here that we get an average on all answers, but, but of course uh, your answers are individual and that's mm what we state all the time for the students when we do, when you use Mentimeter this way to the students, we say, hey, remember, this is an average and use this average constructively, not to bash yourself if you feel that uh, you're different from the others, mm -hmm. but to learn from it and say, okay, mm -hmm. here is maybe something, uh, here's an aspect that I should improve on. Um, so, so we need to, to address to the kids when we ask like this, what, for what can they use it um, so that they don't actually have a bad experience about it? I think we need a drink. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can we please toast for them? Oh, yes. <laughs> because uh, you are so brave. <laughs> and you need to ring the bell because okay, that that's was a, how okay. they chose. The okay. chose. So cheers, guys. Cheers. You know, I really understand your answers that you say that technical skills is the most important stuff. What I figure out is that the personality is a big thing too. Like that you, you, you can be really awful with technical stuff and digital um, programs, mm. but if your personality is there, you, you get a free ticket mm. to remote teaching. Yeah, the point being that once you get um, control over the technical stuff, yeah. you can use what is the most important for you in the daily teaching, which is your personality. Yes. But that's true, it's like, when we speak English here, which is not our native language, mm. it affects a little bit on our personality. Mm. But once we get rolling... So we are even more fun in Danish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. So, but the least technical stuff you can do when you're remote teaching is what you have, have to do. And for some teachers, it's just turning on the camera, making a two-minute video saying, Hi, kids, or hi, students. I miss you. And, and that could be the first step for some teachers. Hope they do then yes. miss their students. Yes.
They, of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, what did we just do? Well, we tried to make variation in the way we asked you, mm -hmm. um, and we tried mm -hmm. to, uh, by that variation, include mm -hmm. all of you so that mm -hmm. you were able to recognize a yes. little thing, uh, just just at least a little thing. Yes. We don't know if that if we succeeded on that. No, um, no. <laughs> you you can you can add a thumbs up or yeah, hearts there are if th you there are think few that we included you in the last questions. <laughs> yeah. There are a few thumbs down. So yes, we didn't yes. succeed. Uh, of course, we didn't succeed no. for all of you. No. So I think it's a, a very important thing that you try to engage different kind of students and you try to remember that different slides, different polls will give different feelings in the students, mm. right? Yeah. yeah, so let's, let's have a, a sequence of, yeah. of how we do this uh, or try to do it in the SOFA school on a daily basis. And this yes. is a, a coding lesson where the students are asked to code, uh, uh, to make programming in a, pro uh, a language called Scratch or a service called Scratch. And they've um, been taught how to program uh, minor game where it's about uh, catching donuts and we have uh, Josefine here trying to catch the donuts mm. Um, mm. coming over the screen mm. so so th this is how we used to, to how how we use different technologies uh, and different perspectives mm. Mm. in the yeah. camera to mm. make variation and even mm. I think Josefine she she was not afraid to s look silly because you look silly <laughs> when you try to grab a, a virtual donut <laughs> Silly, I think I look hungry. Yeah. <laughs> so we just have to see if I succeed yeah. in catching. Oh, there was one donut yeah. right there. And of course, there you could be out there sitting watching this thinking, but I don't have any technical skills to catch donuts <laughs> on screen. So you can make variations and, and um, include more students by just using different kind of stuff or different kind of slides in the polls, right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, explore all the types there are. Mm, yeah. <coughs> it's the, actually, it's the other way around, isn't it? Because usually you have a content, you have a message, and then you find the slide. Mm. But sometimes it's a good idea to explore the slides mm. and see what mm. types are there, yeah. and then see if it actually affects the way you teach yeah. this content. Yeah. And we're thinking on, on different students, and we're using pictures and GIFs and all kind of stuff. Yeah. So, but how do you think they're feeling right now? Do you think they like it? Mm. Well, many say it's great. <laughs> uh, some say it's awesome. Some even say it's amazing. Wow! Oh, we did so great. <laughs> we succeed in all. Uh, oh yes. Everything. All That's the exp expectations yeah, are just. Th this is mind blowing to me. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> but not as many as before. Uh, actually, oh. Paul actually participated in this poll. So. Some of our students didn't answer? I think so. Hmm, that's strange. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Seriously. We know that we left out some answers, right? Yes, the possibilities. Yes. So now you get more possibilities to answer. Of course. So. We did lose some. Yes. Yes. You lost me. No, they strongly disagree. Yeah, but well, we did. So of, of course, we, we need didn't to. Lose yes, that's some. right. We see the average yeah, here, yeah, and then yeah. we see the, the polling here. But on average, we didn't lose you guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> and uh, some of them learned new stuff. Some of mm. them didn't. Mm. But the point being here that mm. we actually also try to encourage the the students to be critical mm. to the way we use Mentimeter. Mm. And and one example here is. Um, well, we'll get, get back to that example yeah. uh, in a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, uh, I yeah. think so, yeah. So, which five, did we, did we show the wrong, I don't know. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you mean the, the video sequence? It, it comes, it yeah, comes. Yeah, yeah, great. So, uh, so right now we show you guys that we use the answers very wisely. We choose what the students can answer. So when we make a poll like this one, we know that there are only three answers. This is misuse. Yes. Uh, even yes. abuse almost, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, this is uh, manipulating. Yeah. So when we ask you about <laughs> which five elements we use in the sofa school, we get like almost the same picture, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> yes. And 
we've uh, experienced not doing these webinars because when, when, we, when you teach live or in a physical room with the students, there will always be one student saying to you, hey, you left out an, 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 an answer. Yeah. Now you're manipulating. But we're mm -hmm. not able to do that when we teach remotely like this. Right. Uh, so we really try to be, uh, to be very much aware mm. of the way we, we do this. Yes. And, and one example we did when it was about, uh, we were teaching uh, about fake news. And there's a video sequence here mm -hmm. where I have, uh, we've invited, we invited an editor in, uh, in chief actually as a guest uh, and in this video sequence, here's a young, young editor-in-chief uh, and I have my breaking suit and I ask, uh, or we ask the, the, the students, how do you like Aslak's suit? Hmm. And uh, it was only positive um, answers to this. And so I, I, I previously, uh, before the, the, web, uh, the, the class, I wrote this article which says stunning uh, students uh, agree mm. this teacher is uh, the best dressed teacher in the country. Yes. So, so it was walk the talk and uh, how sh we actually showed the students how to misuse the Mentimeter poll and how it can be misused in, in, in media. Yes. So in this example, when you want to make something very clear for the students, you just give the students the, all the right answers, right? Yes. Okay, so yeah, we call this return in uh, return of investment, and yeah. of course that's a uh, well, that's not how we look on, uh, on teaching on an everyday yeah. basis. But we hope that you you get the, the sense that mm. okay, you need to make some priorities when mm. we are in this situation where you teach remotely. So if you look at our five elements, how will you? Um, use them? Do you think it takes a lot of effort to use the element and do you think it has any impact on the students? Mm. And this is not what we think, this is what your experience, uh, based yes. upon your experience. Yes. Yes. So we have, we have high impact, high effort, mm -hmm. I, I would say. Yeah. So making uh, time and space for reflection doesn't take that much effort as building the community. Mm. But here is, is the variation is very small. It's actually yes. very yes. difficult to tell something yes. uh, from these five. So we would need mm. to go in deep, de uh, mm. deep dive deeper mm. in the data mm. to see if there is a variation here. Yes. And we yes. were able to do that to extract the, the data afterwards. But that would be some exercise to do with students remotely. Mm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So. This was 40 minutes. Uh, of and what now, we planned. What? Yeah, and, yes. and now. So now we have time for your questions. So you can come up with a question for us and uh, we will try to answer it. And if you ask the question in the Mentimeter and not on YouTube, we'll be able to show your question here, mm. right? Yeah, so it's use the code. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And you need to mark, mark yes. us answer because yes. we, oh, thanks. Okay, let's see if someone, <laughs> when is the next webinar? <laughs> well, <laughs> that is for the uh, Menti folks to answer. And that would actually be a, a question to put in the, the, the YouTube chat. So, yes. If, uh, well, Mentimeter has a freemium uh, model and a premium model. And you can, yes. uh, you can start right away with the, the premium. Yes. And... Um, I want to you learn to use it. Oh yes. Okay, then then I have to tell you something. This is very important because you can never learn to use Mentimeter or to do remote teaching by joining this webinar. You can only learn it by doing it. So of course we can give you ideas and you can find a uh, YouTube videos on on how to do a Mentimeter, but but you have to know that you become an expert in Mentimeter using it in the classroom. Of course. And I would really tell you guys, try to use it and tell the students, this is my first time using it. Because it's not important for the student that you are an expert in Mentimeter or expert in remote teaching. It's important that you show the students that if you want to do new stuff, you got to try it out. Mm. But uh, to, to get started with the basics, mm. there are some previous webinars where you can, they are streamed 
by uh, by Mentimeter. So find them on their web, uh, or find them on their Facebook, mm. and and well on YouTube too. Yeah, I really love this question because I had an idea that if this question will show up, mm -hmm. and of course course you can disagree but I will say that when I do workshops for adults teachers there's not much of a difference between kids of course you can downscale some of the funny jokes and emojis but a lot of teacher a lot of uh, adults respond in the same ways as kids the, the the adults need the community they need to feel included they need to feel that they're engaged mm -hmm. wouldn't you say I, 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 that's my experience too yeah. um, because yes I use Mentimeter too with adults, yeah. and I've tried this yes. um, both internationally and uh, and nationally, doing so, webinars like this. Yes. Yeah, so all our five elements is very suitable for adults' workshops and teaching and classes too. Mm. But the content, of course, needs to be adjusted to mm. to the target group. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Marvin so the next Anderson? question. Yeah. Uh, how can we use this for teaching uh, literature. literature? Yeah. Okay, we did one class about mm -hmm. uh, storytelling and how to narrate and how to build up uh, a story. And we gave the, the, the students the choices from uh, where should the story start, uh, mm -hmm. who should participate in the story, who are the main characters, um, what happened. And then we gave them like five, I think, five uh, choices for a place to be, um, main characters, um, initial scenes to happen. And then I started narrating a story upon the students' choices. So that was a way to get started. Yes. Um, and, and, and then I, I think that you have to remember something, that in the, in the live lessons, in, in your remote teaching, this, the students don't need to do everything while you're at the screen. So the lesson with the Mentimeter uh, the, the lesson's goal is to get the students started. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to teach them everything, you just have to inspire them so they can go out and do their activities. Mm. And, and another activity in, in teaching literature could be let the, ask the students beforehand to read the first chapter of this novel uh, or this play you're reading with them, mm. uh, and then prepare a Mentimeter um, questionnaire where you ask the students, what do you think will happen to the main character? Where, where do you think the story will end? Um, and then before reading the next chapter, then you have the students' uh, reflections on where is this story taking me? Okay. Um, I just skipped some questions for the Mentimeter folks. Okay. Because like it's when the premium and the price and okay, so that would be yeah, uh, yeah. Um, please ask in uh, the YouTube yeah, chat or, yeah. or address directly to Mentimeter, uh, and they will answer you uh, right away, uh, or maybe even uh, the Mentimeter Facebook um, chat. Yeah, yeah. And yes, and you can use I mean, yeah. you do that. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you have the free version, you can do two slides in Mentimeters. Uh, but you can, in PowerPoint, you can add the Mentimeter add-on tool, so you can get the Mentimeter in the PowerPoint slide. So maybe you have a whole PowerPoint slide and you just need like three poles, mm. then you can use the add-ons. Mm. Okay. The we have like hundreds okay, of okay, questions. Okay, 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 sorry. <laughs> so I'll just, uh, you can answer this mm, one. Uh, no, it's not, it's, it's anonymous. And please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, the Mentimeter folks. See, Josefina and I, we're not uh, employed by Mentimeter. We are teachers using Mentimeter, so we are guests uh, at this webinar. So maybe <laughs> there might be some specifics we don't quite know, yeah. but uh, this, it should be anonymous. Yeah, so the technical stuff is for Mentimeter folks. Mm -hmm. But it's a good point that the yeah. students can actually answer yes. anonymously. So it's not uh, a tool to, uh, to, co to control or to follow up on each student. It's yeah. rather a community tool, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And I use Mentimeters for workshops with teachers too. So you can use it in all age groups, definitely. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a question too about our suits. Okay. So why do you wear this colorful suits? Is so that the kids are awake or what? That's right. <laughs> well, well um, yes, I, I teach higher education too uh, in sc at a school of journalism, and I use Mentimeter a lot um, here. But the, 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 the suit thing was when I was asked to come out to a 
a crowd of children and teach them, um, well, it was some presentation and I thought, what is the most important? Uh, yes. It's the first impression I make. And then it was uh, this suit because it was about uh, the television and what is uh, television, uh, uh, actually the story about the, mm. the television. Yes. And uh, yeah, well. Yes. <laughs> and uh, of course you think about how you, you step into the classroom. So you think about your clothing and, and of course, this is not my regular teacher clothing. No. If I had to teach my regular class, I would wear my regular clothes. Mm. So, uh, the science Yeah, question. the science. I think that when you get started with making remote uh, lessons plans, then you can use Mentimedian or lessons. So when you're in classroom, you want to show the kids something or the students something, and then you want to get them thinking. So if you use these five steps, you say, okay, I need them to reflect on something. Then you use Mentimeters for asking the questions. So if you have a science class, you ask the students the, the questions and you get them to think about it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter the subject. Oh. Well, I'm not a science te teacher, so I'm not no. totally able to answer. But you see, when, when the students w made me um, steer the cake and, and put in the ingredients mm -hmm. in certain amounts, I, I felt it was kind of science thing because they were to uh, actually find out the amounts and uh, and and it was like uh, doing uh, uh, chemistry. Yeah, so, so you could do chemistry with the students yeah. uh, interacting. As long as you know what <laughs> liquids you are pouring. Uh, of in course. A, say. Yes, and you can do quizzes and tests too. Yeah. But not test like individually. No. Uh, but quizzes. Yes, we didn't use the quiz module. No. Uh, there's a like a. Um, some of you might know Kahoot. Uh, this is a more advanced uh, tool for, for quizzing. And yes, you can do that. But we did, we did use all the reflection question on a purpose because we want the students to think more than just finding the right answers. Yes. Uh, I don't know if we, you it can... Is streamed. It will be streamed afterwards um, from YouTube. You so yes, you can have a stream. The results on the street, the screen. Oh. What results? Uh, <laughs> I, haven't ever, I never thought of that. No. So that I must be honest uh, to say, um, it depends, I'd say. Yeah. But it's a good idea, thanks. Because I, I see situations where it could be relevant. Yeah. Because yes, they've collaborated on this and the, the, the data you've collected, it's actually a product that you collabor collaborated on. So at least to give that feeling that, hey, we created something in this class. You can answer Mentimeter both on your laptop or your tablet or your phone. So if the kids or the students have two devices, they will watch the uh, webinar on, on one device and answer on, on the other. But they can just use their laptop and have two tabs opened. Yes, they can uh, Menti in one tab uh, and the yes. webinar in another tab or another application. So you wouldn't need two devices, no. no. Okay. Yes, you can what make quizzes, but not yeah. tests. Okay, and uh, maybe we are. <laughs> what is the limit of a free account? Yeah, that's uh, for the Menti folks. Uh, but there are definitely some. Um, there are definitely a lot of. A lot of. I don't know how many, but um, you need to have a premium account to to do all these po different kind of polls. Check it out. Yeah. And mm. you don't need information for the students. We don't know. Uh, what, who you are and what you answer. No, right? but there is actually a form in Mentimeter where you can yeah. have them type in their uh, email so that you can get uh, a, a more personali personalized, mm. personalized mm. answer. Do you understand this question? How do you <laughs> embed individual student accountability? No, I'm afraid not. Um, it. No, I'm not, I'm not no, quite no, sure. No. But please, we have a uh, we have a fellow teacher uh, yeah. sitting in the YouTube chat. So please address to um, to Metsk there, and she'll be with you. Sorry. Yes, yes. Can I use yes? Okay. Uh, no, we no. just answered. I think we are running in circle. Yeah. Oh, that's a new one. Uh, okay. Oh. So. So, of course, when you answer a question, not all the students would answer, right? Mm. Well, well, I would encourage everyone to, to answer. Maybe the part of the answer was that to show the results afterwards. Mm. Because if you show the results afterwards, it's obvious to the whole class that, hey, someone, they don't, 
call with us, someone, why? Then you can have a qualified discussion with your students. Mm. Hey, it, it's much more fun, or it's, you, you will learn more, and it's better for the group that everyone um, actually yes. calls with us. And, and this is like the question from Morten, <laughs> which is outside <laughs> with the camera. He's got a box and a button, mm -hmm. and I know he's using a free software that's called OBS Studio, so you can OBS switch Studio. between mm -hmm. screens. But there are apps in the, in the, for tablets as well, where you can connect a tablet and a um, and a laptop, and then do this uh, this switching pitches. Um, yeah. it's a, uh, there is a free app. I don't remember the name in uh, in App Store yes. to do that. And uh, we have a question. You want to know how to build community, and you can maybe you can go back to the first five ten minutes and think about what we did to you. Mm -hmm. But but also um, how how have we built community around sofa, uh, the sofa school? We used a hashtag, and, and oh, sometimes okay. we. Well, most of the time we ask them to, to send us pictures and mm -hmm. to send us uh, their exercises, whatever they do, mm -hmm. um, in a closed channel mm -hmm. um, where no one else than the mm -hmm. community mm -hmm. itself can see. Mm -hmm. But also we used Instagram with, a, with our hashtag mm -hmm. to, to build up a feeling that hey, you're part of the sofa school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have like two communities, the yes. community feeling, yeah. watching the webinar, and the community around the program or yes. the webinar. Yeah. Because one thing is what we do in a live yeah. session. Afterwards, we have an exercise for the students, an hour and a half, uh, maybe two hours, where they work individually, and then we return back and, and address what they've been working on. Mm. Mm. Okay. So I just skipped some, uh, some questions about how do you use it in, in Spanish and how do I use it in all subjects. And I don't think that the difference is that big. No. It's just that the question you would ask the students in class, you ask them here. And then I really like when you turn the questions more to like reflection. We want to get the kids started thinking or the students. Mm. But there are more and more languages mm. in uh, Mentimeter mm. appearing um, mm. for the profanity filter and for the um, mm. instructions bar. Yes. And how do you make students <laughs> interested in your lesson? Oh, that's the big one. We all want to know that. What we try to do is exactly the five steps here. Mm -hmm. So we, we think that the lesson need to be more inspiring than teaching because we want to, to get the students started. So they have to, after we, we do 30 minutes of live and afterwards they have to do their, their activities. Mm -hmm. Their, their assignments. Yeah. So we need to prepare them for the assignments. W when we started up uh, Sofa School, we, we said to ourselves, every third minute, at least every third minute, we need to put out a poll. Yeah. Because else it's just us talking and yes. talking and talking, yes. and we lose their interest. But yes. by, uh, by sending out a poll, they need to um, commit and, and, and participate actively. Do you know what all the students are thinking when you're talking? <laughs> they are thinking, when will this lesson begin, <laughs> you know? You're talking and talking and talking, and the, the students are often thinking, when is it my turn to do something or, or, and to learn something? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So definitely. All um, right. How long did it take to make this presentation? I really mm -hmm. like this question. Oh, yeah. Because you can make Mentimeter presentations in 10, 15 minutes. But you can also make it in like five hours. Mm. If you, I don't know how, how many hours we spent. We did something yesterday or something today. I think totally a total of three hours uh, because we, we, we discussed a lot yes. how to do this. And we spent a lot of energy on choosing the answers. Yes. Like, yes. And also, I mean, finding the GIFs and the emojis. Um, the, more you, the more detailed you make your presentations, the more time it takes. Okay, you're running yes, out of time. Yes, you can always uh, show a Mentimeter from your own screen, so you can al always share your own screen. Yes, yes. But it's um, it's not your own screen, is it? It's uh, yeah, it is your own screen to share. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was a good question. Okay. I think we need to end the webinar yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. yeah. Um, should we do that by? Uh, I think toast? we should have a final toast. 
Okay. With the participant. Yes. And and then I really before we toast, I want to thank you all for your engagement because this is a really boring lesson if we don't get the students engaged. And then I want to thank you for all the questions. We have like two hundred questions more. Oh yeah. So Great. let's have a final toast and thank you. Okay.